Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday from 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we have Jeremy Hangeller from Long Island, a voluntarist who has had his, um, his own business of uh, uh, walking dogs, um, taking care of dogs, teaching uh, behavioral uh, I don't know how you say, uh, <laughs> behavioral techniques to dogs, um, and uh, is another fight for liberty, fighter for liberty. <laughs> so Jeremy, um, so tell us about how you became a voluntarist. Um, well, the, uh, you know, I took a road like most people, I, I spent a lot of my life uh, not paying attention, um, you know, voting just whatever, you know. It struck me. I didn't really care, you know. Um, and then uh, as I got closer to 30 and I, I, I started my business, I obviously started paying a little more attention because, you know, once you, once you get out and you have your own home and you have your, you know, you, ha you, have, you have actual responsibility, then you start paying attention to what the government's doing to you because, you know, a lot of your money starts disappearing and you don't understand why. Um, so uh, I finally started paying attention. Um, and after being a, a very liberal you know, Democrat, but the, uh, the low info kind most of my life. Um, I, de I decided that, uh, that must've been the problem. And I ran right to the Republican party and, uh, tried to find the tea, the tea party. Um, and then eventually <clears throat> moved on to libertarianism. Um, and then shortly after I found libertarianism, uh, one of the first people I met, uh, was the first person to introduce me to the word voluntarism, which I had never heard before. And, uh, I started doing my investigation from there and uh, after fighting him on it for a while and still insisting that, you know, you know, still being a constitutionalist and being a small, you know, being a small government libertarian and thinking that was the answer um, and fighting him on a tooth and nail. Um, I finally just took his advice one day. You know, he kept telling me every once in a while he would just read Rothbard, read Rothbard. <laughs> and I thought he was just being a snark, you know, being snarky because yeah. I had seen other people write it and say it. And I was like, and then one day I decided to take him up on it. And, uh, yeah, I haven't looked back since. Uh, I read What Has Government Done to, our, Done to Our Money? And uh, I was off to the races. And uh, now a couple of years later, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's like a slap in the face, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so you also, um, you had a, a brief uh, moment where you were involved in the Libertarian Party, right? Yes. I, uh, I actually tried running for office. Wow. That was the final nail in the coffin. Um, <laughs> I, I call I call it the period in my life where where my attachment to minarchism was in its death throes, um, because I was just waiting for that thing to push me over the edge. And uh, I was I was with the local Libertarian Party, and and they asked me to run for a local office because they just wanted to fill a slot on the ballot. And I said, why not? And then I got all excited about it because uh, you know they started talking me up, and I said, sure, we'll give this a go. And Mm -hmm. Then we couldn't even get on the ballot because uh, the Republicans and Democrats did everything they could to, to collude to keep us off the ballot altogether. Wow. Uh, um, and that was actually what was my the final nail in the coffin. And I said, that's it. There's, there's no possible way to do this the, uh, you know, quote unquote legal way and the, you know, the constitutional way. It just, it just wasn't going to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I gave up on that dream very quickly. <laughs> I remember I remember when I used to, uh, you know, I was, I was in my journey and I and I discovered the word constitutionalist and I'm like that's what I am <laughs> I like yeah. that <laughs> yeah and actually I actually bought um, a book that had the Bill of Rights the US Constitution and the Declaration of Independence all together and mm -hmm. I'm so proud I'm like it's like you know if any government agent comes just you know take this book out and <laughs> you know, look yeah. through it oh. um, yeah but uh, but yeah, you know that's uh, I guess that's you know that's the tra that's the transition, right? So many people you know get affected. I like with by Ron Paul. I'm sure you got affected by Ron Paul as well. Would you say? Yeah, I, I mean I wasn't as opposed to a, a lot of other people I've met. I wasn't uh, you know a hard, like he didn't sweep me in like he did a lot of a lot of my friends because um, I still wasn't paying attention that much to politics when he's you know when he was really pushing. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I I wasn't. Um, I mean, I met him a couple of times, and I, I read some of his stuff, and I thought it was great, but he actually wasn't as big an impact on me as he was on other people. Oh, okay. Um, 
But the constitutionalist thing, yeah, that definitely was me. When I when I heard that same thing, when I heard that word, I was like, that's me. And yeah. I actually got a bunch. I, I went through, I think, Cato and got like the stack of 100 mini pocket constitutions. And I just was <laughs> giving them out to people whenever I met them. <laughs> and I carried one in my pocket at all times and I would read from it daily. Wow. To wow. the point where I had most of it. Memor- I could just recite it. Um, and, uh, I was so, I was just like you, I was so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, it, some people describe, uh, I guess, voluntarists like, um, you know, like Jehovah Witnesses, you know, you go, you go around knocking on people's doors, giving out the Bible, trying to, <laughs> <get burned. Yeah. laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's not like that. It's, it's more like, you know, like, like that meme, you know, they say, we just want to take over the world to leave you alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Well. Yeah, that's the gist of it. But most people don't understand that because they get they get fed the propaganda that that is, that we don't want that that we want to ruin their lives and we want to take a, we want to we we want to take away all the wonderfulness that government gives them. Um, you know, of course, completely missing the irony that they're giving it to themselves. Yeah, and they're getting screwed. They're still getting screwed in the process. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and then you know, like I get so so often the um, the black and white fallacy, which is like. You know, I went to high school and I learned stuff in high school. So you're saying you should do away with school, with learning and education? Mm-hmm. How are you know you don't want people to be educated, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Do you get that too? Oh yeah, well it's, it's like the well it's like that or the roads or, or the roads co- you know conversation. It's all the same. All it, the black and white fallacy is is one of the most common ones I see. Yeah, you know. And one of the one of the earliest ones I caught myself doing when I first started learning, relearning, you know, relearning logic and um, and uh, and getting involved, you know, taking starting my journey. I, I started to catch myself doing it all the time, and I'm like, oh, I gotta stop that. And then and now I see it in people all the time, and it is it, all of them. They all fall into that category because yeah. it's, it's yeah. automatically. You don't want the government to do this. Who's going to do it? Nobody else but the government <laughs> can. Yeah, that, yeah. Those are the only options. Yeah. You know, either either government or certain death. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and actually, actually, this guy um, Mark Stevens, I I I, um, I sent you a couple of his videos, I think. Yes. Right, and uh, and I, I interviewed him, and I'm gonna I'm gonna upload that soon. But he he always said every time he mentioned the word government, he says there's no government. It's just people with guns trying to steal from you. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, right. right? So because when you say the word government, it's sometimes again another another euphemism. Like saying these people are are different, separate, you know, from us, and they're special, and they have special rights that we don't have, right? So it can be kind of confusing, you know. If the government doesn't do it, then who will? Because the government, yeah. they're special people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I well, yeah, but that that goes back to the problem with language, where you know, yeah. it's, it's so we. I mean, we all we're all we're, you know we all fall victim to it. Um, cause it's the common vernacular. You don't, you can't help yourself, you know, sometimes because mm-hmm. most of our lives we've all thought of the government, the government, we yeah. don't think about the fact that it doesn't really exist. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. same, same argument with a lot of people want to get into the minutia between, you know, some people use the, who use the term the state versus the government. And those two are actually two separate things. But most people use the words interchangeably. Language is a pain in the butt, man. <laughs> it's the root of most of our problems. So how would um, you, how would you differentiate um, government and the state. Um, well, I mean, from at least from what I've I've been able to understand, the difference is the you know government is the is the form that it takes. The state is like this overarching thing that you know that when we think about you know when because like when we at least you know we as volunteers, I know myself, um, you know when I say stuff like I, I want to end the state, you know, or I just I just want the state to go away, you know, like that's that. To me, that's an overarching thing where it's any any form of government, any, you know, just the, the power structure in any country and, mm-hmm. and it's everywhere. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, so that but the governments itself is is what runs the state. And then, of course, it's people that actually run the government. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, most people I do it. My, I fall into it all the time. I use, use government and the state interchangeably, mm-hmm. you know, um, same, you know, just same thing with like anarchist and voluntarist and all the different words and stuff like that yeah. like i said which is tricky it's a pain in the butt and i i used to preach you know be clear in your language and language has meaning and i try really hard to stick to that but mm-hmm. it gets tough sometimes do, um, do, you, do you differentiate between anarchists and volunteers 
Um, to a certain extent, um, I, I look at anarchist as the overarching, again, the overarching, you know, umbrella that everything else falls underneath. And, you know, then you have the separate, you know, if you want to get into the people that are like, you know, the, the anarchist, the, the anarchist with adjectives, you know, all the different ones, ANCAP, ANCOM, ANSYND, all this different stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, or just, uh, you know, voluntarist. Um, it's basically, like I said, I, I think I can use the words interchangeably, but there is, I guess, slight differences. So I, I just think as anarchist is the, is the overarching thing and, mm-hmm. and voluntarist falls just a notch underneath that, but they're basically synonymous. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like, uh, I mean, I guess some people who like to, um, you know, incite the, uh, you know, the irritation of people, they use anarchist more <laughs> and other people, <laughs> other people who want to maybe stimulate, you know, some, some questioning, use voluntarist because no, not many people like have heard that term like what is what yeah. is voluntarist right yeah yeah no I, and i get that too because you know when i used to hear the word anarchist i automatically went to the chaos definition and never re- never realized there was other definitions and yeah. um you know so i understand why people get like that so i used to shy away from the word for for, for a while mm-hmm. um right for that very reason um and now, now I, I use it a lot more because I, like I said, I, I try to be clear with my language and I try to be, you know, I try to impart on other people that, you know, th- that language has meaning. And I find myself saying that to a lot of people, whether having conversations with them um, or, you know, you know, stuff over the internet and stuff like that, you know, discussions I get into there. Just, I say it a lot, you know, I say it, type it all the time, you know, language has meaning. You got to stop, you know, because people just use words and then. When you call them on it, they'll say, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know what you mean because yeah. you use the word that doesn't actually fit there and you just, yeah. you think it does and people have been, you know, led to believe certain words mean certain things, which yeah. gets back to, you know, uh-huh. other conversations you and I have had about that, you know, taxation, you know, versus theft and, you know, how they, they're actually synonymous, but people, people think they're different because they gave it a different name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, uh, definitely get that. You know, it's it's not it's not theft because I enjoy paying taxes yeah. because we need roads and bridges. <laughs> well, if you enjoy paying taxes, fully for you, man. Yeah. I do not, and most of the people I know, even people who think I'm nutty for being a, for, for, for being an anarchist, don't pay their taxes because they want to, or even because they think it's for the great, greater good. They do it out of fear of being harassed, and you know possibly locked in a cage oh yeah uh, so exactly yeah yeah, oh. yeah. I, I got a, i got a um a letter recently uh for jury duty right um <laughs> and uh and it's been a while since i got one of those letters right but it, it says on the letter you must by law fill out this questionnaire and submit it and you know this is not this is you know you won't necessarily be picked right mm-hmm. but, but just the fact that it says by law i'm like no, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to. <laughs> well, see, that, that's, a, that's a tough one, but I, I get what you're saying. The, 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 the principle there, yeah, absolutely. I usually reject things on their face when they when they start off like that too. But it's like it's it's, it's like that would be that would be the um, the <coughs> argumentum ad baculum, right? The appeal yes. to the stick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do yeah. You, it's like fine. You don't you don't have to do it, but I have this stick right here. You know. It's, <laughs> all right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, although, like I said, in that case, jury dude is the one thing. It's a tricky one because I, 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 I try to stay away from, from as much interaction with the state as humanly possible. Um, and I'm pushing even further now. Like I've taken my business. I'm, I'm trying to get out of the banking system and I'm just trying, I'm trying to go to straight, uh, precious metals, uh, cryptocurrency nice. and, uh, and, uh, uh, barter. I've actually offered barter, sir, you know, a barter plan with some of my clients. Awesome. Um, but, uh. You know, I, I try to avoid dealing with them at all costs, but jury jury duty the one time I think it's worth it to uh, to go and be be a part of the state apparatus because you can talk up jury nullification if you can manage true, to get true. through. That's true. Yeah. If you can manage because I've heard a lot of people uh, have gone in and said that straight up during the interview process that they're going to that they're going to attempt to nullify whatever. And uh, they obviously don't get paid. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you do have to lie a little bit, I guess, to get yourself in there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. then you have a real opportunity, you know. That's true. <laughs> like the voting for me, is, it's beyond me. I don't think there's any hope whatsoever. And I think people, while well-intentioned, um, you know, certain libertarians and certain uh, um, 
voluntaries that I know that'll still use the voting system because they think, you know, at least they're going to try, you know, try to do something while they're there. Um, I don't think that's worth it. But the jury nullification thing, I think that's something that, you know, people should jump on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know but next time I get called, I, I fully intend to do so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did consider that. But then at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I just I just hate the idea of giving my information to, you know, or, you know, any more information than they already know. Like, they have everything. They have they have everything anyway. I know bad. exactly. Like, like, but still, I just, I, I just, <laughs> especially you know, when you, when you see by law, I'm like, oh man, yeah. that that just got. <laughs> <That's, laughs> yeah. Maybe if they said please, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <it's, laughs> oh come on now! So, the government, the government's not as asking nicely. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so so that's cool. You're taking your business. You said you're. Um, so, so you, you're going to be more into like uh, direct cash or or bar. Well, I don't. Well, well, most most of my clients, because I, I I send out a letter a couple times a year to tell them about the going on with my company and you know vacation time and all that stuff. And uh, I recently sent one out and just I finally made the decision. I said, all right, I, I want to get out of the banking system because um, I just you know I, I would like to get away from 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 Federal Reserve notes altogether because they just lose value every day anyway. They're not doing us any good. Yeah. Um, unless you're turning it over right away and, and replace, you know, and buying stuff that you could, you know, that you can hold on to, yeah. um, or, or, you know, exchanging it for, for precious metals or, or, or cryptocurrency right away. Um, you're just losing value anyway. So I'm trying to steer myself away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first thing I had to do is, you know, let my clients in e- down easy and tell them first, I just couldn't accept checks anymore just because I want to get out of the banking system. So uh-huh. I don't want to have to deal with banks anymore. Uh-huh. So that means obviously cash. Um, or, if, you know, I, I told every one of them, I, I prefer if you, would, if you would be willing to pay me in gold or silver. <laughs> nice. Uh, or, or I'll start off with Bitcoins and then see where it goes. I'll take, uh, I'll take your sterling silver uh, silverware, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, or like I said, I offered barter to some of my clients who are willing to take me up on that. Uh, I just, you know, for me, you know, everything comes down to principles for me. So, sure. you know, I try to, you know, I'm basically trying to lead by example. So what can I do in my small part over here? Um, I can take my business to, you know, start taking the steps to get to that point where, where I am that type of business and yeah. you know, hopefully it will encourage others, you know, cause I specifically, in, in the letter I sent to my clients, I specifically added a couple of lines saying, listen, if this confuses anybody or you'd like to talk about this for, you know, or this interests you anyway, feel free to contact me, mm-hmm. you know, opening the doors of communication and hopefully, you know, getting the message out there even more that just, cool. you know, <clears throat> leading the systems dry is the only way we're going to be able to do anything. Cause, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Definitely. and the best Definitely. way we can do that is to convince people to stop using the Federal Reserve notes and, uh, you know, so not, the, not let them steal our money that way on top of everything else they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like I just I just posted the voting, uh, <clears throat> the voting video today and, and one of the interesting comments, you know, so one guy was uh, talking about voting, you know, it's good because you can turn down, um, you know, different bills that, that, you know, are for increased taxation, you know, you can, you can reject those, but... Um, but yeah, so, sometimes, uh, it just legitimizes, you know, the whole system, the whole corrupt mm-hmm. system by, even by participating in that way, you know, and, yeah. and so I think there's just so many other better alternatives to do that, um, like that. And, and also like I'm, I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist, Chinese herbalist. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I started doing also bartering. And it's really, it's a good feeling. It's nice, you know, that people, you know, because people are struggling now, you know, with, with uh, money and, uh, and you know, I want to treat people and they need treatment. So <clears throat> if they have something that they can trade, you know, some, some mm-hmm. skill, so it's, it's, it's a win-win, right? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, well, yeah. So let, let me get your, uh, your thoughts on the, uh, the, the recent um, smackdown of the, of the precious metals prices. <clears throat> Uh, you know, the silver, the silver and gold prices now. What do you think about that? Uh, how far? I, you know, what, honestly, I haven't been on the past two days. How far is gold oh, down? Oh my god, silver is now. I think today is like seventeen fifty an ounce, oh. and and gold is like twelve hundred twenty <clears throat> an ounce. And it's yes, low enough for me. <laughs> yeah, silver, I, mean, silver I, I get when I can. Gold's still not low enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, rich for my blood. 
I, I mean, I couldn't believe it because, like, when I started buying it, like, uh, I think I started buying like two years ago, it was like thirty-two dollars an ounce, and uh, and even at that time, I'm like, I was telling my wife, I'm like, I'm like, in two thousand eleven, it used to be forty-nine. This is a bargain, you know. We got to yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it, it can't stay like this for long, and so and so from her perspective, it's just been a loss, right? Yeah, because oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's just gone down, down, down. And I'm like, you, you can't look at it like that. It's not, it's not a profit making thing, right? It's, it's like, oh, it, well, it, yeah, it can be if you want it to be, but no, for the for people like us, no, it's not. It's yeah, it's preparedness is, is is what it boils down to. Um, but yeah, yeah, on it, I mean, what I think about it, unfortunately, anytime I see any major um, change in, in any commodity or any, or any, or any currency, um, I automatically, my th first thoughts automatically go to government manipulation somehow. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like they're helping artificially drive down the prices so they can, you know, so people will start, so the, you know, less informed will start selling whatever they have in a panic mm -hmm. and they can sweep it, you know, swoop in and buy more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I saw uh, Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante had something about that a couple of days ago. I think that was his that was his thought process on it, and it made sense to me. Yeah, um, not saying you know I haven't looked. At, I honestly haven't invested investigated it enough because um, I'm just an amateur when it comes to it. You know, like I said, I'm taking my business that route um, just because you know from a principled standpoint, and and mm -hmm. you know, and like I said, I'm also trying to as an outreach to to do to to you know uh, show other people what I'm doing, and maybe they can do it too. Um, but I don't know, you know, I don't follow it as closely as I, sh as others do, or maybe even I should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I kept hearing about a cra I kept hearing about a crazy drop. There was, a, there was a bunch of people that were shouting that gold was going to drop to 600 again. <laughs> uh, and that's what, I think that's where the talk of the manipulation came in. I mean, if it comes to that, I'll, I'll mortgage whatever I have to for the <laughs> short term. If gold drops to 600, I'll find a way to buy it by at least five or six ounces. No, no, silver, I'm telling you, silver all the way. Well, silver all the time silver i stock up on whatever i can silver that, that, all the way yeah yeah gold is um you know th there's this there's this channel i follow truth never told and the guy is a big big silver advocate and um and same thing mike maloney from goldsilver.com he pretty much says the same thing that the disparities between the gold between gold and silver are so exaggerated that mm. when when they actually do revert back to what they should be it's mm. going to be it's going to be like um it's gonna it's gonna go past the mark, way past the mark, really? and and so, you know, some people say you know um, it's gonna be like parity, equal price between gold and silver. Other people say it's gonna be you know silver is gonna be yeah. more valuable than gold, because just because of the nature of it, like it's consumed and it's used so much in industry, as mm -hmm. compa as compared with gold, right, which is just hoarded and stored in yeah. you know central bank vaults, right. So, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating. That's actually what got me into volunteerism in the beginning was studying precious metals in the monetary system and and Federal Reserve, central banking, all that stuff. Um, you know, it, it's kind of fascinating yeah. because like, who's interested in that? <laughs> you know, it's like if you tell if you tell somebody, you know, you know, what, what are you interested? In? Oh, I like I, I, I like the economy. I, I learned learn about the economy. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, let me let me ask you that. When you're talking to somebody and you want to spark their interest in this kind of in this kind of um, genre, what do you what do you tell them that you're interested in? How do, well, you, how do you phrase it? Um, I you know, honest. I mean, I, I think I I think when it comes to like uh, economics and stuff, I, I the the phrase I use most often is I I'm just a student I'm a student of economics. Okay. Um, you know, because like uh, like I was saying before. Um, when it comes when it comes to enlightening others, yeah, okay. <laughs> or at least showing them the path and hoping they step on it, take yeah. a walk, yeah. um, it it, don't, it, don't, it varies from person to person, and so I don't go in with any preset, um, you know, notion of what I'm going to talk about. I just have a bunch, you know, I have a, I have I have something tiny chambered for virtually any discussion I can think of. Uh -huh. okay. And then I wait to see I wait to see either the questions they ask or something they bring up that yeah. they're interested in that I can find a way to uh shift the conversation to a more, you know, mm -hmm. voluntarist friendly um perspective yeah. and maybe get them to see some stuff. But yeah, when it comes to I think a student of economics is the you know okay. um, 
student, student but far from a master. I think I've used that a couple times recently. Nice. Um, That's but yeah, because it's just like, you know, most people don't, like you were saying, most people think it's boring, you know. Oh, yeah, economy, big time. <laughs> Economists, well, that, that's why that's why the government's, are, you know, well, I'm sorry, we were talking about this before. The people who run the government, um, <laughs> yeah. are, in order to be clear with our language, um, the, people who, the people who run the government um, like everybody to think that economics is boring because then they, they don't pay attention to it and then they can get away with whatever they get away with because oh, most yeah. people, oh, the, the experts will handle it. We don't, oh, yeah. you know, you know we're, it's way over our head. You know, oh, we right. can't possibly understand that, or exactly. it's too dull. So I don't want to bother to learn. But, exactly. You know, yeah. You know, I came down this path the same, so similar way you did. You know, reading stuff on the Federal Reserve and stuff. Once you get into it, it's kind of hard to stop, though. It's just getting yourself willing to read that stuff. <laughs> and and you know what's fascinating too is that if you look on like regular news stations like you know CBS, NBC, Fox, and all that, and they start talking about the economy, and they start talking about the Federal Reserve. You know, they will say things like, um, you know, you know, the, the, the Fed met today and, they, and, and as a result of their minutes meeting, they, you know, they decided to, um, you know, keep interest rates low, you know, near zero and unemployment's, you know, going up by such a percentage and, <laughs> you know, yeah. and this is, you know, and it's like, it's such complicated stuff, really. And it's, and it's just been, it's just, it's just given out to people as if it's, it's, it's assuming that everybody understands what exactly the Federal Reserve is, what exactly quantitative easing is, what exactly, what's the difference between currency and money. And, you know, <laughs> I, I yeah. think it's just kind of funny how, you know, it's like they want it to go over people's heads. That's what they want, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I heard somebody talking about this the other day, and I don't remember who it was, but I uh, but I caught somebody speaking pretty much about the newscast and stuff like that. And I, I think that I think part of the problem is, I mean, half the newscasters don't know what the hell they're talking about yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's it. Cue well, card or, or the, you know, cue card. I'm aging myself here off the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> off the teleprompter. Uh -huh. um, most of them, and the ones that do know, are probably in the elite level where you know they're they're making profits all of this anyway, so they're not going to say anything. So they, yeah, you're exactly right. They they just they say this stuff like it's commonplace. Yeah. Because most people are either not paying attention or just go or will just nod along and go, oh, yeah, that's, I know, right? Okay, okay. that's got to be it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good. Keep an interest rates low. Excellent. That's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's keep artificially messing with the money supply. Awesome. It's, it's nothing, nothing but good can come from that. It's, it's, it's nothing but unicorns and roses. It's going to be great. As long as the experts say it, it must be good, right? So yeah. how, how can the experts be wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I get that a lot. Like, uh, you know, if I start going into, you know, the Mandrake mechanism and currency creation with people, especially with people who even majored in economics, you know, they tell me um, – you don't understand what you're talking about. This is very complicated stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. And just leave it up to the experts, you know? Well, yeah, of course, of course. Well, you know, I think we we were talking about before about fallacies, and you know, that that's one of the, that's probably the second biggest one is the is appeal to authority. Yeah, get that one. The time. But that's basically what they're doing. They're just like, oh, we we studied this, and you don't know anything, and exactly. um, but yeah, the the, the experts. The people who have done all that studying, those are the hardest people to reach because they've been indoctrinated harder than anybody else. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So it's even harder to break them. Um, and, and, yeah, they don't want to hear anything we have to say. We can't possibly know anything if we didn't, you know, get that four-year degree. And uh -huh. I don't know how many times I've had the phrase, you, you don't know anything about Econ 101 thrown into my face. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't even realize that Econ 101 is nothing compared to what I've learned on my own. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. By, by studying the different schools of thought outside of the college setting and, and seeing the flaws in all of them and going, yeah, there's something very wrong with the way people are taught economics. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not as complicated as they make it. Um, there's just a lot of gibberish in there to confuse people. Um, oh, yeah. And it's just, and, 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 and government, you know, government interference that just makes everything run the way that make people, that make people think it's difficult and, and hard to understand. Um, oh, the yeah. smoke. Smoke and mirrors is all it is. Smoke and mirrors, yeah. Have, have you ever um, seen the the Zeitgeist trilogy movies? Um, I watched part of the first one, um, but I never got around to finishing it. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I read up a little bit. I don't. I don't know the whole deal with that. That's the Peter Joseph stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the most I know about him is his, his, his debates with Molyneux. <laughs> oh. Okay. 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 
Yeah, because that's what really um, actually I think before even uh, studying economics, I I learned about that, which is actually is interesting because you know in a sense he does talk a little bit about economics um, because in the first one he he does delve into the Federal Reserve and currency creation and fractional reserve banking, um, so. Uh, then, from that sense, it's pretty accurate, right? Mm -hmm. But then, once okay. once he gets into, uh, you know, the Venus Project and resource based economy, <laughs> yeah. Then, then, uh, like at the time, I thought that, that wow, that's a great idea. That sounds pretty awesome, you know. Because <laughs> I, I didn't really know of anything else, you know. And then, well, once I started reading other things, you know, you you realize, like, wait a minute, <laughs> somebody's yeah. also controlling this society. And you know it's a magical society where nobody works, and we have everything yes. we ever need. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We're called the utopians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, that always and, makes me. Laugh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so people call you that. You, you, you know, you just. Uh, oh you know. yeah, one of the com one of the common criticisms is is, is, is the utopian society, and 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 it can never be achieved. Which, which in, is, is a, in, in and of itself is a, is a fallacy to even say that to people. Because in all honesty, I mean, at least the way I look at it, every form of government, um, or in our case, the form of no government that we would like to see, um, is somebody's idea of a, of a utopia. Yeah. So the argument itself is just is, is, a, is a moot point, I think, when it comes to any. Like, I even think when, you know, when people say communist utopia, it's like, to me, that, that that's a ridiculous argument because mm -hmm. everybody, you know, in some every form, you know, to, to the constitutionalist, are you know the the form of government we live under is, is a utopia to them because it's the you know not the way it's being handled now, but if the constitution was being followed to a yeah. T to yeah. them, that would be a utopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But but on, on the other hand, okay, if you want to call what, what we are searching for a utopia, so what? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the idea? Isn't that what everybody should be trying to attain, whether it's impossible or not? Isn't you know? Shouldn't the ideal in any situation be what you're always striving for? Yeah. Because if if not, you're just settling, right? Yeah. In any situation, any facet of life, if you're not striving for excellence, and to strive for excellence means you're never satisfied, even if you're the top of the game, mm -hmm. you still want to try harder. So you know, to me, when people call me utopian, I, like I said, it depends on the person I'm talking to. But if, I, if that gets thrown at me it depends on the person and i'll go one of two ways i'll either go automatically to well any form is utopian so it's a moot point what else you got mm -hmm. or <laughs> if they want to persist a little harder i say okay fine it's a utopia why shouldn't we strive for that yeah, yeah, um yeah. <laughs> i'm not you know I, I i just i just think it's uh you know it's high time we tried something different so why not start getting people to think like this and uh you know and, and, and the other thing is regardless Regardless if it's possible or impossible, you know the whole idea of voluntarism is is just it's it it it's makes sense because it's basically the golden rule of morality, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? <laughs> and the only the uh, you know I, I remember one of Mike Shanklin's uh, you know posts is like you're a decent person if you you know if you apply that principle to your um, family and friends, right? You're considered a moral person, but when you apply that universally, you become a voluntarist, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's just like not making any exceptions. And so, regardless if regardless if that society is possible or impossible, don't you just want to treat people that way? <laughs> you know, yeah. I forget about having a, a a utopia society. Like, just treat people nice. <laughs> don't take yeah. people's stuff. Don't you know infringe on people's property? You know, um, I mean, it's just simple to me. It makes sense. It's logical, and well, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> what do you think? Well, it makes it makes well to, to people like us. Of course, it makes sense because we think logically. I mean, <laughs> but that that's that's part of the problem, though. The reason the reason most people um, can't see that, um, you know, like you're saying, it, it's it does. It sounds so simple because we've already made the made the leap. And we've already seen the other side. <laughs> um, the people that, that can't, in order for them to be that nice and not harm other people, means they have to do a lot of self-examination. And once they do, mm -hmm. that's when they'll finally realize, you know, you have to be able to see the immorality of, of government itself or of the state or whatever you want, however you want to phrase it. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, you, you have to be able to see that. And that's when you can start really treating everybody. Because if you just say, okay, I'm going to start treating everybody nice and I want to be nice. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense to a certain extent, but people don't want to let go of certain things. So that's why they fight that. And that's why, you know, as simple as it seems to us, yeah, you should just be able to treat everybody like that. And then everything will just fall into place. Yeah. You know, because because in order for that to happen, people have to admit that they were wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the hardest things for most people to do. True. Yeah. I know that was for me. When I when I was fighting, you know, when I was fighting through my minarchism <laughs> towards the end, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, everything, I, everybody who brought stuff to my attention was just like, look, it's just, you know, government's just not necessary. You're just a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And I uh, fought and fought and fought. And, uh, and that's what it was. I didn't want to admit that I, cause it, it, me, it meant meaning, it meant I had to admit that I was wrong. And I, in a big way, like I had been misguided, even when I thought I found the truth with constitutionalism and all that stuff, I had still been misguided <laughs> and I was still wrong. Yeah. The hardest thing, the hardest thing for people to do, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, yeah. uh, you know, like, yeah. you know, treat everybody nice, right? But I still vote, you know, <laughs> you're right. Don't, don't steal from people, <clears throat> but these people should be taxed, right? <laughs> you know, every, you know, people are, people are nice, except those people across the ocean in that country. Those people are not nice. <laughs> those people, those people need to be punished, but people over here, we're nice. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's- that's the disconnect that keeps most people status. Yeah. They can't, you know, they can't make the connections because they don't use logic and, you know, they don't use logic consistently. Mm-hmm. And that's the only, that's the only way you're able to accept what, what, you know, what government supposedly does in our name is by, you know, being able to have that disconnect and being able to be like, exactly. It's those people are bad, not these people. Or our government's good. It's their government that's bad. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> or, or even worse, it's, it's just some of the people in government that are bad. It's not government. Government's not bad. No, no, no. We can just replace the people, but it'll be better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let, let me ask. Let me ask you this. Um, so this is a, an argument I get uh, pretty frequently. Is um, is like okay? So um, I understand what you're trying to do. You know, you, you don't like government, but there's going to be people who are going to pollute. You know, businesses, they just want to make a profit. All they care about is the bottom line. You know, they're going to pollute the air, the water, the soil. We need people to protect us from them. Mm -hmm. How are we going to protect ourselves from those people when that's their bottom line? They they don't care about anything. They just want to make a profit. Yeah. (laughs) So what, what would you say to somebody like that? Um, well, usually when I get, when I get that argument, my first question is, so you're telling me that none of that stuff happens right now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which usually baffles most people. They, like that, like you usually catch and trip them up right. A lot of people you'll trip up right there because then they'll have to backpedal immediately and say, "Well, well, no, well, of course, you know, you know, of course." And you know, to me, I, I try to boil it down. You know, like I said, it depends on the person. It depends on where you think you can find it in with them. Mm-hmm. But with that particular one, I, you know, I, I usually just, you know, I start off by saying, well, does it happen now? Okay. And once I get them to agree to say, okay, well, yes, that is occurring now. Um, so government isn't actually doing anything to stop that. Why are you exactly worried that lack of government won't be able to stop that? Oh, <laughs> but, it, but it'll be worse without government. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what they next, say. That's usually the next line. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if you live in a community or a certain geographical location that has these businesses and you find out that one of them is doing this, don't you think all everybody would band together and be willing to pay for a service to monitor them? Well, and most people will agree to that. So, okay, why can't we pay somebody ourselves to monitor that system instead of the government doing it? Because the government just contracts somebody else out or creates a new agency with a whole new attached bio- uh, bureau- uh, bureaucracy in order to accomplish that goal. Mm-hmm. Just cut out the middleman. Mm-hmm. You know, I, lately I've been finding that argument has seemed to be is it seemed to be getting through to a lot of a lot more people. Um, when you when you when you treat government as, as you know not evil and not you know immoral, even though it is, um, <laughs> but uh, as just a, an unnecessary middleman. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how I would attack that one. Say, you know, okay, if you really think that people are going to do that, then, you know, we all chip in and we pay for something. 
you know, a couple of them maybe. Um, so we have competing ones telling us, you know, you know, again, though, it's, it's, it's hard for a lot of people to understand just the simple concept of in a free society, mm -hmm. every, you know, there's always going to be bad actors. There's bad actors now. Most of them work for government, but that's another story. Um, but there's always going to be bad actors. The rest of people have a vested interest in making things work smoothly. <laughs> And that's what, you know, again, so simple, but it goes right over most people's heads, you know, because they automatically say, well, government's not there. So what? Government's not there. We'll find ways to make it work. <laughs> I know, right? We need theft. There's no way around it if we don't yeah. steal from people. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, that, well, that, that, of course, well, yeah, you, if we don't steal from people, there'll be free riders. There's free riders now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, that's usually my first argument. That's usually my first defense with any of those arguments and say well are they happening now <laughs> well you know so of course they're happening now okay so your government's not doing a very good job <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so my my response to that one with the pollution is um which entity is the is the largest polluter in the world is it mm. corporations or <laughs> is it is it governments with their nuclear weapons, with their genocides, with their you know yeah. mass murder? I mean, are you more worried about a stream or millions of people dying <laughs> because yeah. because of an insane government? Which one is yeah. which one? Which one is are you more afraid of? Yeah. I, I, I think I think sometimes when people come up with these with these um, petty arguments over details, you people can you conveniently forget. You know, there's drone bombings happening right now somewhere you know and it's like because it's not happening in our backyard you know it's just easy to forget right oh, of you know and and there's occupations in like how many countries now you know it, that's conveniently easy to forget you know there's no occupations here but there's occupations everywhere else right so um you know being the nuclear superpower of the world that's uh something that can be conveniently forgotten right <laughs> well that's that's cognitive dissonance at its finest you know most people that's again that's you know you know e economics is hard that's why people don't pay attention to it and government can get away with what they get away with yeah. um foreign policy is hard so we'll let the experts handle that <laughs> yeah. so and, and then you know the, you know there's like you know last year with the with the whole syria thing where people actually stood up and said no we don't want to you know we don't want we don't want to go to war with syria we just want to stay out of this you know mm -hmm. which was actually kind of impressive considering the way things have been going lately yeah. Uh, yeah but that was one of the first times people were actually paying attention and actually stood up and said no we don't want to do this mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part you know the, the 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 news cycle changes and people forget about whatever was happening before and then they move on to other things and like you said they forget about the occupations they forget about you know and, and i mean i honestly believe it's by design you know mm -hmm. um the media just, you know, purposely, you know, they change stories and they, you know, it's scary. It's, it, it's like living in 1984, but not, <laughs> or, or Brave New World, but not, you know. No, no, actually, I think it's, it's much worse than 1984. Like, like what George Orwell predicted was nowhere near as intrusive as what's going on right now, <laughs> you know? Yes, no, well, we don't actually have the, t we don't have the actual TV screens that shut, that shine into our apartment and talk to us yet, but. True, uh, true, but yeah. we, I mean, we have, you know, you know, all the email, all the texting, all the <laughs> phone calls, all the, you know, um, you know, you got, what, what do you have, what do they have, like, micro, like, they got, you see those microscopic drones, like, they, they look the like insects, drone? yeah, 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 insects, like, they can just, like, you know, land somewhere and record anything, and, and actually, that's another interesting topic, is the drones, because immediately, when you, when you say the word drone, people think of, you know, or I guess most maybe mostly us uh, think of you know you know dropping bombs or missiles on you know foreign countries killing people, but you know the guy who made drone the, the original drone, he didn't make it to kill people. Mm -hmm. You know he made it like as a convenience. You know it's a new technology, right? But yeah. of course you know with any new technology that has uh, ap you know potential applications to uh, to kill people, you know the government's got to take it over and. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's like it's like Skynet, man. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah.
<laughs> they gotta start, they gotta start somewhere. But you know, I say I say that all the time. Tech, not you know, when people are always either complaining about or mourning technology, you know, what, what what I always like to say is technology is it, it it's gonna it, it can be and most likely will will be our great savior. But at the same time, it's also the bane of our existence because anytime somebody comes up with something great and that can help you know somebody else is automatically going to try to find a way to manipulate that and use that to their advantage yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and unfortunately they use, it's either people from the government themselves or people that will use the government to help subsidize yeah, 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 use yeah, yeah. Said, you know which is just another good reason just to get rid of the governments altogether because look at all the look at all the damage they cause <laughs> stealing all our good ideas taking, yeah. taking drones we could we we could have had the drone taxis by now if it wasn't for them taking it for military purposes. <laughs> I firmly believe that that we would be way past way past roads in terms of uh, you know um, I mean way, way past roads and cars as a means for transportation. You know if if it wasn't for governments being there and restricting innovation and you know with all the regulations and you know having a monopoly on the roads, right? So, you know, if it wasn't for that, I firmly believe we would most likely have flying cars or teleportation or, or whatever. Of course. I mean, well, who was the guy? The, I forget the guy's name who, who, who had the, the water-powered engine. Yeah. That he did sometime around right after Henry Ford came out with the, with the you know, the question editor first. Uh -huh. um, and it, he never figured it out completely, but that whole thing got scrapped and they never really, you know, like yeah, stuff like that yeah. been going on for ages where ideas yeah. have come and they haven't been perfected, but yeah. if people yeah. weren't allowed to work on them and they weren't regulated out of existence or the government didn't sweep in and, you know, get the patent on it somehow, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and then just hide it away and sock it away. I mean, there's tons of stuff out there, you know, the, the whole flying car thing, um, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that we'd, we'd be living in a Star Trek-ish world already if, they, if the government hadn't gotten in the way. I don't know about full teleportation, but, um, you know... I mean, I mean... Least, go ahead, well, go ahead. Printers, 3D printers are the are the next step, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think, has been, has been delayed. Is that the type of thing that I'm talking about? Like, you know, just being mm -hmm. able to create anything you want mm -hmm. on, from, from your desk, literally. Just, you know, you stick something in a boop, but, you know, 30 seconds yeah. later, it pops out for you, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, like... Um, so, so some of the people who advocate for government, you know, they they say that it's like the broken window fallacy. You know, you know, you see what we have today. You know, we see you see all the all the things that you know supposedly done by government, like you know, roads, bridges, tunnels, all that. And they say, you see, this is great. You know, we we have libraries. This is so wonderful. But the thing that you don't see is the unseen is all the potential that was destroyed because of you know. Um, you know, stifling innovation because of oppressive laws, because of strangulating regula regulations. That's what you don't see. What what possibilities were destroyed as a result of that? And and that's what people. That's I think that's one of the diff most difficult things to imagine, right? Like, and, and which is a similar thing with with public school. You know, look at you. You went to public school. You turned out okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how would I have turned out if I didn't waste my twelve years of my childhood? You know, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, like it's like the earlier conversation about settling. You know, you don't you don't realize if you don't if you're not pushing yourself, and if you think this is all there is. Well, look, and it's so great around us. Why would we want to change that? Yeah. But exactly like you said, it's the uh, you know, and who knows where we could have been. Uh, but but again, people don't like to think that way because heck, most people are convinced that. We wouldn't have the internet if it wasn't for the government, just because yeah. <laughs> that worked for the government helped create it through subsidies that they stole from us in the first place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've definitely got, I heard that one recently. Um, but yeah, so I, hear, I, hear, I hear constantly. <laughs> oh, you hear that constantly? <laughs> yeah, I hear that one a lot. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, so, is there anything that you want to finish up with? For uh, no, I mean. It's uh, it, it's just it's rough out there. Every, I, I just think everybody, you know, anybody who's on our position who's already made the leap uh, <laughs> to uh, a more heading towards a more peaceful life and trying to encourage others to do the same, um, is just gotta just gotta keep plugging away. Um, you know, uh, I I use the one mind at a time line a lot of the time because that's really all it is. You just True. keep talking to people. You know, um, you know, I, I meet a lot of people that are dejected. Um, you know, because they, they have all these great ideas and they've, they've gained all this knowledge, but nobody wants to listen to them. And 
you know, they throw their hands up in the air and all these statists, they're never going to learn it. Well, most of us were statists at one point too, and we all learned, didn't we? I don't oh, yeah. think I'm, I don't think I'm much smarter than anybody else. You know, like yeah. I, I just took the time and, and somebody took the, took the chance with me to, to try to show me some of this stuff and was patient with me and answered my questions. So that's what I try to do now is I just try to, you know, Good. like I said, I, with my clients, with people I meet, meet on the street when I'm walking dogs, um, like I, I wear my shirts like I'm wearing now, you know, and nice. I just try to start conversations any way I can because I'm out in the world all the time. And, you know, you just talk to people. And even if the person you're talking to doesn't pay attention, you never know who else is listening. You know? Yeah, it's so important talking to people, everyday people, wherever you are, grocery yeah. store, parks, playgrounds, libraries, anywhere. Um, you know, it's, it's funny, I, the, the conversations I get into at the grocery store, my brother is kind of amazed, like, like, you know, the, the clerk is like, you know, the, the cashier, she's, uh, she's, you know, checking my items. And then by the, by the end, by the end, like, I put my debit card, she, I'm already discussing the Federal Reserve <laughs> quantitative easing. <laughs> and my brother's like, how do you go from groceries to the Federal yeah. Reserve? <laughs> like a like I said, it's all about connecting the dots, man. You just gotta find that way. It's, once you start talking, if people are, are responsive, you can talk. You can you can find ways to, to direct the conversation yeah. to where you want to go. Oh yeah. And uh, you just gotta find that in with everybody. And if, if they're if they're gonna listen to you, especially in that situation, she's a captive audience. Can't yeah. do much about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and also, I also find that it's it's helpful if I avoid using the word anarchist <laughs> because yeah. that can be a, a that can be a deterrent. So, to, yeah. to, to make it smoother, I just like yeah, just do do like the Socratic questioning. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's the smartest way, to, uh, at least that I've found to go like, go about it. Um, just leave terms out if at all necessary. Like I said, I just I you know I wear shirts like a billboard just to hopefully attract conversation and it works because people will stop and ask me and you know if they see certain things they've never seen before it's like hey what's that about yeah yeah awesome and you tell them, or you know or you just strike up a conversation with somebody about anything else you know, about anything and you know you find what they're you know find something that interests them right away and then you you know you know what you're in is and you're okay we can try to work that angle yeah <laughs> excellent good well I like that one mind at a time that's yeah. Uh, that's the way we do it, you know. I I, I hate hashtags for the most part because I'm not a Twitter <laughs> and I think they're silly. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't do that either. <laughs> uh, but I have used it from time to time on Facebook, and that's the one that I use all the time because it's true. It's really what it is. Like I said, you just go out there and you, you spread the message where you can. You drop the seeds, and whether it's in person, you know, like you said, whether you're meeting people online or the cashier themselves or people you run into in the street, or if you're online talking to people. You know, even if the person you're trying to talk to isn't listening, you never know who's watching or listening and picking up stuff themselves. And yeah, even yeah. if they don't ask you questions, maybe they'll go home and Google something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all it is. Just that's all we can do is just keep plugging away, and uh, eventually, it'll only take a couple of generations once there's a serious enough push. So all we gotta do is just keep just keep putting it out there. It's, yeah, prob know. probably like 10 percent, right? 10, 20 percent of the population, very yeah. you know, informed and you know, willing to uh, educate <laughs> others. That's all, and then you know, start with the younger generations. That's all it's going to take. Oh, yeah. You know, um, it's like that. You know that it, it's actually I got yelled at out of it this recently, but because it, it's actually a Victor Hugo quote that uh, Ron Paul uh, paraphrased. But that line Ron Paul uses all the time. You know. Uh, an idea that an idea that time has come um, cannot be stopped by any army or any government. Yeah. Um, that to me, I visualize that saying um, with the the A and the and that starts it as the anarchy A. Nice. And <laughs> that's what I think of every time I hear that now. Nice. Nice. Um, and that's what it is. It, it's, it'll come eventually. We just um, you know we just have to do our part um, and not give up, not give up hope. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Keep writing. Keep keep blogging. Keep doing. You know. Do whatever you. Yep. Whatever you do. Keep doing it. Awesome. Right. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy, for the uh, no for, well, for the opp for opportunity. Uh, so this is peaceful anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care.